We get you ready for week two of the Orange football season, a win in the books against Ohio and Rutgers coming up on Saturday. Brian Higgins, starting guard Chris Bleich. And uh, how's that sound, Chris? It was two years for you pretty much without a football game that you were out there in the starting lineup and finally ready to go. It's a great feeling to hear it finally, instead of being a bench warmer on the sideline. <laughs> And then you get in, and the line killed it last week. I mean, 280-plus rushing yards. We know what uh, Tuck did out there. How good did you guys feel as a group after game one? I mean, it honestly just felt great. Like, obviously, the line's kind of been talked down negatively for a couple of years and come out week one and show that we could actually produce and block for people like Tuck, Cooper Watts, Abdul, Jarvion, and all of them. I mean, it felt great to put up 280 yards. We know uh, linemen pretty much always prefer the run blocking, right? You like to go forward. No, that's a lie. Way more tiring. <laughs> like, we hope that it's just one break play, water break. <laughs> okay, Sean, you got to take it all the way to the house on the yeah, first one <laughs> next week. All right, you see what Tucker did last week, though, 180 yards. When that is happening, and it's happening consistently throughout the game, what, what's it feeling like in the huddle and on the sideline as you're getting those plays in there? Honestly, the energy is just flowing. Like once you hit the first big one, we just want to keep going, hurry up the tempo, try to worry up the defense, and just get in the end zone. Like it sucks when you have a negative play, but he keeps attacking good plays. You're just like, let's go, let's get it in there. And he hit the first big one on the first drive of the Ooh. game, so that that must have really nice. got it going. <laughs> oh, that felt nice. <laughs> and led to a touchdown on the first drive out there, uh, Chris. For you personally, last year must have been frustrating because. I, in my mind, you thought you were going to get cleared and get to play, and then it goes against you. How tough was that last year to not be able to help out? Oh, that was actually devastating because then I think the thing that killed me the most is when I heard the numbers. Um, I think it was 250 players got approved out of 260 or something. I was one of the lucky 10 that did it. I'm like, okay, makes sense, my luck. And then you see what happens after the season. Now that's not even a thing anymore, but you can all get the one free transfer when you look back on it, you're basically going to be right one of the last guys something like that's ever happened to. It's crazy. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> how did that drive you into the off season, knowing okay, now I'm good, now I'm going to be able to get into the mix this year? Um, through everything that actually happened, it just left a chip on my shoulder. The way I took off season workouts, trained, prepared my body, just working on everything I possibly could to get ready for this season. I feel like that incident, as much as it sucked, it motivated me to become the best player I could be. And uh, we, we see it out there a little bit in game one. You personally, how, how did you grade your performance the first time out? I mean, for 22 months back, I mean, I felt fine out there. I mean, I still felt like there was more I could have gave. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just personally feel like the player I could be, I'm not there right now. What's the chemistry like uh, on the left side of the line? You, you got Matthew Bergeron over your shoulder. He, he made the move to left tackle midway through last season. Uh, what's the relationship like between you two? It's honestly just a funny one. We're always joking around in the locker room or meetings room. Um, we just have a good connection with each other, and it's just easy to play with them. And it, it's coming together at this point. Obviously, the challenge steps up a little bit this week. How do you guys keep it rolling after week one and not get satisfied? I mean, obviously a bigger challenge for us. Rutgers has a really good defensive line. I mean, I feel like the way you keep it rolling is playing with the chip on your shoulder. You see better competition. I mean, I feel like as good as we did week one, I mean, it still doesn't prove anything to anyone in this conference. I mean, I feel like if we take care of business this week, we might start getting a little more respect for ourselves up front. All right, Chris, you grew up in the, the Wilkes-Barre area, give or take, uh, which is quasi-equidistance from here to Rutgers, Penn State, sort of, at least within an hour or so. Who, who were you rooting for back when it was young Chris Blythe? Neither. <laughs> who was it? I was whatever team my dad. Actually, that's a lie. It was Iowa. My brother used to love them, so I always piggybacked off of my big brother. All right, that's good. We, we got no problems with, with Iowa. We don't yeah, have to no get problem. mad at you for Penn State or Rutgers. <laughs> no, I always hated those teams. <laughs> okay, what's this matchup like? Because it's Syracuse and Rutgers where there is a rivalry, but it's not one that any of you guys – have been involved with. It's been since 2012 since this game happened. So how does that sit on the game this week? That historically, yeah, this was an every year game, but it's not happened in almost 10 years now. I mean, I feel like the fact that historically it is a rival that we'll play in, like there's some aspect, obviously with the big East and everything. Um, me personally, I, ne I never liked playing rivalry games because I feel like some games get overlooked more than the others. I personally take this game just as any other week, prepare the same for it. All right, lastly, Chris, uh, first game that you get to play inside the Dome. 
What do you think that'll be like for you personally? I think it's going to be a crazy experience. I mean, for my OV, I personally love the Carrier Dome. And when I was there for the Wake Forest game, it was crazy. So I feel like coming in, this is a big game for us. It's going to be packed. I hope so. Pack the Dome, guys. And I'm just excited to play in front of all of you all. All right, uh, Chris, uh, keep it going, and uh, good luck this week. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's Chris Bryce. Listen to the man. Pack the Dome this week. We'll see him out there on Saturday.